All right, so as you already know, Xbox has been killing it with two things. Backwards compatibility and Game Pass, basically offering a ton of games to be able to be played on a monthly basis. Well, I mean, I guess as long as you keep paying, you get a ton of library of games that you don't own, but you can keep playing and download or stream via the cloud. And PlayStation are like, you know what? We need some of that bread too. So they can't put their PlayStation Plus, which is now rolling out, and they've released a new blog post to let us know what the situation is and how this is going to go down. So we're going to get into this and I'm gonna discuss how I feel about this new move. But if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to subscribe. We are trying to get 10,000 subscribers this year. But yes, you can see here on the official PlayStation Twitter, it says starting today, the new PlayStation Plus becomes available to players in Asia, launching in Japan in the near future. They say head to PS blog for your guide to the all new PlayStation Plus from membership plan details to service features. So we come to the article that was just posted and it says your guide to the all new PlayStation Plus. You can see the image here has got essential, extra and premium. A closer look at the benefits and features. The all new PlayStation Plus begins its launch rollout today starting in Asia. And we couldn't be more excited to offer this service as a way to get even more money, <coughs> more great games into the hands of players. Let's dive in. What is the new PlayStation Plus all about? We've brought together PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now in an all new PlayStation Plus membership service that provides more choice and value to customers across three membership plans globally, essential, extra, and premium. Deluxe in non-streaming markets, so countries that got shit internet basically. Our focus is on providing a curated and diverse game portfolio with hundreds of high quality titles to choose from when you subscribe to extra or premium slash deluxe. Where is the new PlayStation Plus rolling out and when? The new PlayStation Plus will launch in most countries where PlayStation Network is available. Here is the launch schedule in local times. Asia, excluding Japan, launches started today. Japan targeting June 2nd, 2022. North and South America targeting June 13th, 2022. Australia, New Zealand, and Europe targeting June 23rd, 2022. Shafting Europe, I don't know what reason, but okay. Now, what are the key benefits for each plan? Check out the chart below for a quick look at the key benefits. And this is the interesting part. We've got the essential available globally, extra available globally. Deluxe is obviously the non-streaming version of premium, and then we've got premium. So the same benefits from the original PlayStation Plus members is the PS4 and PS5 monthly games, online multiplayer access, exclusive discounts, cloud storage, and more. And that's the thing that everyone gets. Now, personally, this point doesn't really entice me much because the whole idea is that you get like free games every month, but you don't get to keep them if you end the subscription. So they're not truly free. It's free as long as you keep paying, which is the antithesis of what free really means. But yeah, I mean, it's the original membership, basically. Then you got the new one, PS4 and PS5 game catalog. And that one isn't available to the essential, only for the extra and premium slash deluxe. And yeah, this one is basically just a bunch of PS4 and PS5 games that will be included in the thing, basically like Game Pass for Xbox, and you could just play them as long as you keep subscribing to this membership. So there's a ton of games you wanna play that you haven't paid for, then you could just subscribe to this monthly and have continuous access to them. But of course, no ownership, right? Then here's where things get interesting. Original PlayStation, PS2, and PSP Classic Games Catalog, and then PS3 Remasters. So original PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and PSP Classic Games are emulated, right? But PS3, because, you know, they're too lazy to actually figure out emulation for it, they're using remasters. And for that, you only get that on the premium or deluxe tier, basically. Which, there's been some controversy recently because they're using the power versions, which only run at 50 hertz versus 60 hertz, which means the games are going to be running slower. I don't really think there's any graphical benefits here. Maybe up res, but that's about it. But nonetheless, at least you have that library with you that you didn't have before, right? And here's where things get even more interesting. Time-limited game trials on blockbuster titles. And this is only available on the premium slash deluxe tier. Now this one we actually heard about before because apparently Sony revealed to developers that if your game costs over $34, you would now have to make a two hour demo available for said game so that people could try it out if they're on this higher tier. Now it doesn't retroactively apply to previous games, but any new games coming out above this price point will have to essentially do this if this point is true. It was a leak from before, but the assumption is that they want to do this so that they can have more demos or more trials to help sell their package. And if that's the case, then personally, I think this highest tier may actually be worth it because there's so many AAA games coming out. I don't want to spend money on all of them. Even though a lot of these games will come out, people will be talking about them, hyping them up. And it's like, I want to try this, but 
do I want to pay full price for this? So to be able to just try out two hours of every major release coming out and not have to commit to buying every single one of them, then at least you know, like, because there'll be some that you will actually buy, but there's some games that I played that I paid full price for and I realized were not my cup of tea and it's like, well, I've already paid for it. Like, Ghost of Tsushima, like, I thought I was going to love it. I thought it was going to be some Asian Assassin's Creed, but it was very different and it wasn't my favorite and I never went back and finished it. I already paid for it. And then of course, because they only mentioned PS3 remasters before, they've now added original PS3 games via cloud streaming. And this is only available on the premium tier. And no, I'm not using this bullshit. Streaming PS3 games, no. 7th Gen was notoriously bad when it came to performance in terms of frame rates, shit like that. And who wants to be streaming games that were struggling to hit 30 FPS? I mean, I love those games. But if it's not a remaster or it's not emulation where you can enhance the experience, I ain't trying to stream some games like that. Unless it's a game that really performed well originally. But this is not really going to appeal to me personally. And then you've also got cloud streaming access for original PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games, which... Again, I don't know why you'd want to stream those. I guess to avoid downloading them to save space. But quite frankly, if you can just run them directly on your system, I would just pick that option anyway. But they, they give you both variety, right? Just like Game Pass, you got the option, which is, which is a good thing, right? But I mean, Game Pass runs on like multiple devices that aren't just your Xbox. So it kind of makes sense to have the cloud option if you want to use it on your phone or something. I don't know if the PlayStation Plus option is going to allow you to just run this on your computer i have to see because i mean ps now did run on pc i did use ps now on my pc i never really used ps plus but i did have ps now and it ran fine on my pc i didn't actually have to use a playstation for that so i have to see if this does work without having access to a ps4 or ps5 then i could see the benefit of that cloud streaming option if you're away from the console and you just want to bust out a quick ps2 game which even then my phone could probably emulate PS2 games pretty well. I got an S22 Ultra, but, you know, it's, it's there, right? And then they say which markets will have the cloud streaming option via PlayStation Plus Premium. And they basically just list you know, a bunch of first world countries, I'm assuming. And then we get into the pricing. $10 for PlayStation Essential, which is $60 a year. So that's like 50% off if you pay for, you know, the whole year in one go, which I, I guess is fair. £6.99 for Essential in UK. £49.99 for the year, which is actually less of a deal because you're paying for six months worth for the US one. It's from $10 to $60, but the UK one, you're paying over seven months worth, which is kind of cheating. Like, why, why are we paying more than US? And then for PlayStation Plus Extra, it's £10.99 monthly, £83.99 yearly. And for PlayStation Plus Premium, £13.49 monthly and £99.99 yearly. So you're paying about seven and a half months of that yearly if you buy it in bulk, basically. And they talk about the lineup. It says, what is the lineup of games included with the all new PlayStation Plus? And it says, we'll launch of 700 titles across three membership plans. So that's including everything, the PS2 games and all that stuff. They mentioned blockbuster hits such as Demon's Souls, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, NBA 2K22, Red Dead Redemption 2, Returnal, and more. So this is the sample list they got here. We can see Bloodborne, Days Gone, Death Stranding, Demon's Souls, Ghost of Tsushima. You see, I pay for Ghost of Tsushima is going to be included in this package. See what I mean? God of War, Gravity Watch 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, Infamous, Little Big Planet 3. Oh, they got Loco Roku. Shit, they got Loco Roku. <laughs> Third party got AC Valhalla, which I already paid for. Batman Arkham Knight, Celeste, Control Ultimate Edition, Far Cry 3 and 4, Final Fantasy. And then they show the classic games catalog. And they say if you already purchased the digital version of the game, then you don't have to make a separate purchase to use them on PS5. But only some of these titles will still be available for individual purchase. So you can see here, Ape Escape, Jumping Flash, Third Party Partners, Tekken 2. I mean, this is a pretty small library. This is PS1 and PSP. You got Bioshock Remastered. You got Jack 2, Jack 3. Where are the PS2 games, though? I don't understand. I, mean, I guess Jack 2 is a, well, it's a remaster, so that doesn't count, right? Well, I mean, technically it's emulation, but I, I guess they're counting that as some kind of remaster. And then we've got the original PS3 games via streaming, which Ratchet and Clank is there. Infamous 1 and 2, Demon Souls, which is on PS5, remade, so I don't know why you'd want to stream the original. Like, if you really wanted to play the original, at least play it, like, emulated, but... And here's the interesting one. Time-limited game trials. You can play it for two hours for most games. The playtime counter only counts while you are in the game. It's a great way to try games before you decide to buy, and any trophies and game save data from the trial period 
will carry forward if you purchase the game. And then they've got like six things here, right? But if the leaks are to be believed, then we should be seeing a lot more AAA games showing up on this trials list, right? Because they're basically forcing everyone who's charging over $34 for a game to have a trial. And they do say new games will be added regularly. It says there'll be a monthly refresh for PlayStation Plus Essential and the higher tiers and four the extra and premium tiers, there'll be an additional monthly refresh in the middle of the month. And they clarify that you only get streaming if you use PC and you get game downloads if you use a PS4 or PS5, which makes sense. So essentially, this is the only way to legally play PS1, 2, 3 PSP games on PC. Like if you don't emulate them like natively, you could use this service to stream them to your PC, which fuck's going to do that when you can emulate them, right? But it's an option, right? They also mentioned that trophies will be in some original PlayStation and PSP titles, but it's optional for developers. You can buy DLC for games that you don't actually own that you're using through the service, but you will lose access to the DLC if you stop paying for the service, but you'll get access back if you buy the game or resubscribe to the service. You can play downloaded games offline, but you need to validate to PSN once every week. So yeah, I guess the question is, is this worth copying? I mean, that's up to you for your own like money and what you feel like spending. But for me, I do think I will have to get the premium tier because I mean, I didn't used to pay for PS Plus, as I said, because it was really just like an online thing. And I wasn't really playing a lot of online games on PlayStation. Like I don't play too many online games. And when I do, it's usually like Nintendo stuff, which is why I have Switch online. But for this, most of these things aren't even that appealing to me. Like the old games, which are going to be emulated, not really at the best levels compared to just doing it yourself on PC as I am a PC gamer, but the game trials, that could be the selling point for me, right? And to get the game trials, you have to get premium, right? So we're talking £99.99 .99 yearly. Now a AAA game usually costs about £60 in the UK. So that's one and a half AAA game that you're paying for a whole year of this service. And you're gonna get access to two hours worth of game trials per game. And if it's true that it's gonna to apply to every single game that costs at least $34, if that does come to fruition, then that means every single game coming out I can try for at least a few hours without paying separately for that, right? For the cost of one and a half AAA game for the whole year. Combined with the fact that you're getting access to a bunch of PlayStation Studios games and third party games, which they're gonna be updating every single month, I do feel like it's worth the price because if there's at least a couple of fully priced games that you wanted to pay for that you haven't paid for yet, you're gonna get your money's worth pretty quickly. Plus the ability to stream the PS4 games like to your PC or whatever, like if you're on the go, which I really wish you could stream the PS5 games as well, just in case you're away from home. But it seems like something worth getting because quite frankly, I've always been more of a fan of the PlayStation library than the Xbox library. That doesn't mean I'm a PlayStation fanboy. I have a Switch, I have a PC, like again, People get so hung up on that shit. But I'm gonna keep an eye on this. So when it drops in the UK, I will definitely have to give it a go and see if the library improves. And I really hope this game trials thing applies to all the big budget games. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the situation. PS Plus is dropping with their new subscription tiers. Are you gonna be copying? Which tier are you going to get? Do you think Sony has done well with this package? Personally, I still think most of the package is mid. Like the emulation doesn't look like it's gonna be all that great. They should have done PS3, they didn't do PS3, but the game trials alone plus the PS4 and PS5 games means that it still could be financially viable for a lot of people who are interested in that library and haven't purchased all those games. But yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. More content coming soon to the channel. But it is your boy, Rem Remulus, Rem Gang. And I'm out.